Dwayne. Dad. Kevin. I feel unprepared. Sebastian. That was a ripoff of the Bluey theme song. <laughs> yeah, okay. I understand why I was unprepared yeah. for that. All right. We'll see if that makes the cut or not. <laughs> it better. It got damn better. The copyright it version. It better. It better. Hey, what day is today? Triangle. Okay. You. Burner. Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy, tell him. Six seven eight triple nine eight two one two. Okay, now that we have the attention of all the people who were in middle school twelve years ago, <laughs> welcome everybody to the Board and Scale podcast. Everybody. The podcast where we talk about board games everybody. and pretend that this is also going to be about snakes at some point. <laughs> <laughs> what else could scale possibly mean that we could permutate this into? Um, large fitness. Large. Scale, scales. Oh, we talk about scales, weight loss. Weight loss, scales. Ozempic. Uh, <laughs> permanent diarrhea. Um, All topics we're talking about today. You know, weighing things. Scales, balance of scales. Sure. Sizes of stuff. Yes. Yeah. How many? Name a size. Extra large. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> Okay, so um, Isaiah size. This one's a little bit loopy. We just did <laughs> two other videos. Um, one of them required a lot of physical activity. So uh, this actually, that actually might come out before this. So sweet. Um, everyone will know if you haven't awesome already. Go watch the scavenger, and everyone video. will it's know. It's gonna be something scavenger. How okay. easily I could have killed Kevin. Wow, <laughs> you say that. Could have bleep. You say that. We're admitted into the show. Okay, no cursing, no death threats. <laughs> <laughs> we're at least where where we could have realized how easily I could have eliminated Kevin. There you go. That's PG. You say that. So you take an elbow to the groin. Elimination. Wow. Fight dirty. Okay. Pocket so sand. the first thing we're gonna talk about <laughs> is something that I just talked about uh on Reddit. If you are someone who uses Reddit and uses the board game forums, I want to talk about what the last game was that really excited us. And I'll let you guys think on it. I'll go first. You mean like, like we were excited to play it or when we played it, we were like, oh, to get it, to play it, to okay. touch it, to experience it, okay. everything for me, I'm going to say it's Twilight Imperium. Nice. I don't know if you can see it in the frame. Probably not. But I have already played Twilight Imperium twice now. Not as much as Kevin over here. But I was browsing through the local trade chat for San Antonio and saw someone who was like, hey, I got an extra one for Christmas. Does anyone want to make an offer for this? Right. Also up for trades, depending. Me? I have 20 games in an adoption pile waiting to get out of the house. So I said, hey, I sent him a picture of all the games. And I said, hey, do any or multiple of these interest you in a trade for for the game? Because it was still unwrapped. So I, um, And I really want it. And I didn't want to pay the exorbitant price for it. He said, sure, let me take a look. Came back 10 minutes later and was like, uh, do you think I could have this, this, and this? I'll be honest with you, and if he ever sees this, it's too late now. No take backs. You could have had six or seven of those games. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that you only said three, I didn't even have to think about it. There was an instant yes for me. Not only do I get three games out of the house that I don't care about anymore, that I was having trouble really trying to just straight up sell, um, but I got a game that I really, really wanted to add to the collection to have for myself. Um, and the whole, we ended up having, I couldn't, we couldn't meet up that day. So I had to wait a few days and each day, Hey, can we meet up today? No. Okay. Can we meet up tomorrow? 
No, cool. Can we meet up today? No, cool. Four or five days later, that he's like, hey, is today good for you? And I was like, yes. I'm going to be at Black Potion for Blood on the Clock Tower. I'll be there from this time pretty much late into the night. He shows up, brings the game out, and my little fingers start tingling. <laughs> Whatever. We completed the moins. trade, and I just could not stop staring at it while we were playing Blood on the Clock Tower. Um, but yeah, it's the last game I was really excited about. If you have played Twilight Imperium, like this video. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> Boom. Bing. All right. Dong. And we'll move on. Dang. Okay. I think the the last game that I was excited to break into was Dwellings of Eldervale. Ooh. I've played it once and I enjoyed it. Yeah. Massive box. Um, worker placement. Can't talk about them like that. Oh. <laughs> Large container <laughs> containment system <laughs> cool great um worker placement fantasy big big pieces large bright colors um screen printed little meeples it's it's a really cool looking game and i did break it out and it was really fun um a little i will say the one thing about it it probably overstates its welcome a little bit Really? I think so. Okay. Um, but other than that, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I just needed to get up in there and just like get to the pieces. I wanted to see those pieces in person. Yeah, and play. And, and play and put it. them on the board. That's like, that's the worst part is opening the game and it's like. I have to wait to play with these correctly. I play this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know some people will just like mess around with it. I can't. I can't not follow the rules and just do whatever I want with the game, you know? <laughs> so if I'm not like, if I'm not going to set it up and play it, mm -hmm. I'm not taking the toys out. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's honestly kind of why I stopped unwrapping stuff. See, that's different for me. It's like, it's innate. As soon as it gets home, it's got to get cracked open. Dang. I think there's something about timing too. Cause like if I don't, have the time to put a game back together the right way, right? Like to, to read the rule. I've never played the game before, so I don't know what the components are. I don't know how to organize box it back in the up right way. Organize it. The, the bigger game, the harder that is, yeah. right? Which is, yeah, it's always just a little bit of a barrier. That's fair. Like I've done that. Like I've came home late with a new game and I was like, I'll, I'll I gotta wait till tomorrow to open this. Yeah, or else yeah. you're just gonna leave it on the floor. Yeah, or else it's just gonna open and just be like, well, Damn. Yeah. <laughs> now I have to read the rule book. Damn. But yeah. Uh, Dwellings of Elder Vale. Pretty sure that was my last one that I was like really excited to get into. All right. All right. Um, if you've played Dwellings of Elder Vale, like the video. <laughs> if you haven't already liked it. <laughs> Kevin, you want to hit him with the triple? So I. this is going to sound messed up. I don't have one. Really? Ooh. Yeah. So I was thinking of this, this this time I was like trying to like listen to you guys and be like, oh yeah, you know, like what are the things about the games that like make them really exciting and really interesting and like you want to you want to unbox them, you want to buy them, you want to unbox them, you want to play them. And and I think so my, downtrodden. I, well, no, it's <laughs> this is the problem. It was like I'm a you know like anyone who knows me and see my collection knows I'm as much a board game collector as i am a yeah. board game player and because of not having been able to play stuff for so long so much of my stuff is still in shrink so there's this you know just kind of overwhelming amount of content that is just sitting there waiting at any moment so like because of that like i've just kind of suppressed anything that looks like excitement for like oh i can't wait to get this you particular don't want to feel one. guilty about the other ones well, no, it's not even that. It's just a matter of like when you when you know when you have dozens of games in Trink, like what makes one so much more special? Um, I might I might be able to make an argument for like Apiary because it's a, a Stonemire game, and I know I like Stonemire a lot, so that would probably be close. I'm gonna wait till somebody looks on it on the shelf and be like. 
I would like to play that. And then that's the point where it's like you can release okay, it. Maybe I'll. Maybe yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll if if that. somebody else wants to play something, you know, I'm absolutely more incentivized to 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 prioritize playing that. But the other thing with having eighty something Kickstarters in the queue waiting to deliver still, yeah, that's like a constant. I can't the- even. I know that you've said the number before, and something about it's still so surprising every time you say it. Yeah, but like having that many, like, I'm yeah, I, I'm lucky if you get notices like, hey, this is shipping or whatever. And you're like, oh, all right, cool, yeah. Like I remember backing this two years ago. Or we'll talk about it. All your shit just gets canceled. Oh yeah, I would love to vent on that. Um, but yeah, so like, there's again, there's just not a huge desire. Like if things are coming. Like when I play games and buy them on like the market or whatever. Like, okay, maybe a little bit more. You know, but again, there's so many. So playing games is probably more the is, it you know, actually. Like just knowing you're about to sit down and play yeah, something like I enjoy. I just enjoy every piece of that aspect of it. And it's fun to play new games and stuff and get things to the table. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not unexcited to play things. Right. Like getting to see Castles of Burgundy and whatnot and and and, and revive and hecky first rat you know just anything just like new games that i haven't heard of or i own or what even doesn't matter whatever it's just like oh it's new fun stuff and just enjoy the experience you got a last game you were looking forward to play like you were like you knew you were going to play this and i was like oh so i'm excited probably apiary huh apiary probably would be the one because it has that stone mire that and um expeditions again because they're yeah. two stone mire games and expeditions especially because it's in the uh, scythe universe so yeah those ones were like no really like if we do nothing else i need to get this to this this i'm ex- I, I guess those i'd say i'm pretty excited i was excited about okay okay the last one if uh you hate board games. <laughs> if you have a gross addiction to crowdfunding. No. That's not what we call it. We're not allowed to use that word. What no, can we call not it? Allowed to use the, what can we call it? I can't think of it. If you're obsessed. <laughs> obsessed. Ooh. You have an obsession. Ooh. I, um, I'm okay. Honestly, I think we should embrace our obsessions. Um, hey, because what else do you have in life, right? What do you want to do? Could be drugs. Oh, I pay my bills on time. Who cares? No one cares about that. The, well, the, the government cares. <laughs> look, if you're not paying your bills on time, don't be backing Kickstarters. <laughs> or but who needs a house? Get the Kickstarters. File for bankruptcy. After. Who needs power? Who needs water? That's true. You got board. Games. Live off the grid. Board games don't need any electricity. Make exactly. sure you're investing in your IRA. Traditional Roth. Or you get a piggy bank. <laughs> and when you need money, you smash that piggy bank on yes. the sidewalk. And you have the bonus of when you smash it, you can go oink as it hits the ground. <laughs> oink? Oink games? Oink games? Oink games? Wow. Big old fan of them oink games, baby. This man loves his oink games. I love oink so much. Do you want to talk about your little nasty thing or... Sure, since we're talking about crowdfunding. So uh, <clears throat> so if you don't know, there's a, a board game company out there called Mythic Games. Um, they've, they've crowdfunded a handful of, of games over the years, and um, they've, uh, over the last couple of years, had a lot of trouble. Uh, so the first game I ever backed by them was um, called Reich Busters, uh, cooperative game where you play as various world war ii characters and whatnot and you're fighting nazis um kind of like a dungeon crawler supposed to be kind of sneaky and whatnot um the the rules for the game were so bad there were so many problems that they were like hey look we gotta do uh an errata for this so they built this huge errata pack um and the fact that they were willing to do that put a lot of confidence in the company so it's like okay cool i'll back more of your stuff um, so after that, there was a game called Hell, H-E-L, which is a Norse Norse game. Um, and then I can't remember the order. Um, Siege 6, uh, based on the uh, Rainbow, Six. Rainbow Six game. Yeah. 
and Monster Great game, by the way. Might might be a good IP. I have no idea. Yeah, yet. we'll <laughs> find out. Um, they did Darkest Dungeon. I didn't back that one. A oh, they Pop- did Darkest Dungeon. Mm-hmm. Yep, they're oh. the Darkest Dungeon people. I almost backed that because I just I played the video game. I'm yeah. glad I didn't. Yeah. Also, a great game. Well, you can get the game now for much cheaper on the second-hand market. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Duh. Uh, Monster Apocalypse was another IP that they take they took in from somebody else and 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 did a new <coughs> board game release of it. Um, and then Anastir was the the most recent one. So th- I think the real trouble financially started with Darkest Dungeon when they came out and they basically told their backers they're like, hey, if we're gonna make this game, we need more of your money. Uh, and, and there were, you know, this was during the pandemic and whatnot, like freight cut had yeah, gone up, changed. you know, the cost of cardboard, a lot of things had changed. So this, at first everyone's like, well, we, you know, this wasn't the first time crowdfunding, you know, um, campaign runners had, had done something like this. But the thing that surprised a lot of people was how much they asked. And I, I, I wasn't a darkest dungeon backer, so I don't know how much it was. Um, but then sure enough, like the, the, if I remember, I don't know enough about Darkest Dungeon, so I won't talk about that one. But for Siege Six, they did the same thing, and it was hundreds of dollars extra if Gosh, you were like an all-in dude. backer. So it almost doubled the cost of of the game. But the consequence was that if you didn't pay the quote unquote ransom, that's what everyone else called it. They obviously did not call it the ransom. Yeah, uh, was that you were probably never going to get your game. Here's your convenience fee. That's unfortunate. Nothing, and and people who were asking for refunds, they're like, look, we will honor refunds. But they have to maintain solvency as a company. So they can only give you so many refunds at a time. So they had like a limit. No one knows what the limit was, but every month they could only release so many. And at the time that the Siege 6 content had, uh, or like the, the ransom note had been submitted to the users, people were saying that there was like there was a year long backlog. Oh my gosh. Of, of people, refunds. Yeah. Um, and there, it was just an absolute debacle with Siege Six. I ended up paying it. It it is being delivered, right? At the end of the, they actually did carry through, and it will be delivered for everyone who paid for it. Uh, and then just today, so I'm waiting on Monster Apocalypse, Hell, and Anastir, and uh, just got emails from Mythic Games for Hell and Anastir that they're done. They're just. They, oh, they've given they've up given up on them they cannot proceed with them jeez so what they did is they sold the ip and the content for them to simon so simon is stepping in they've purchased the content um and nobody knows for how much uh, no one knows what the terms of the deal are everybody would love to know because mythic is in a lot of hot water with, it, with pretty much everybody and simon Great company, but has also had some problems with customer service and shipping rates and all that kind of stuff. So people are very curious. So they just said, "Hey, we're done. We can't. You know, we sold the IP." Simon shortly, like within minutes, sends out another letter to everybody saying, "Hey, we've acquired it. If you are a backer of at least the base pledge level or above for either game, like for Hell, you can get the Hell one." Uh, for Anister, you can get the Anister one. When they release their campaigns, you can get the base set for free. You're an all-in backer, though. I was an all-in backer for both. I'm yeah. $771 in to both games. Sheesh. And I will likely, I mean, I think when you look at a standard Simon campaign, normally the base pledges include the base game and all of the stretch goal content. And usually like goes for like 150 bucks or something like that. It's gone up, obviously, with inflation and everything. I'm suspicious that they're going to release a base base version that is just the base game without no the stretch goals so that they can honor their agreement to mythic backers uh, without having to fork out the extra. Yeah. Now, I you know, at the end of the day, that's not Simon's fault. They're doing their best. They didn't have to do any of this stuff. I don't know if that was a part of the agreement. Uh, I don't know do, if they do got Do you a... think that that's a dumb idea? Like, why would you involve yourself in what is... Like, peop- so many people are mad about these projects. Why would you involve yourself when, uh, to be honest, Simon kind of has their own issues, you know? 
It's a good question. And then be like, we also suck. So <laughs> here you go. I don't know. I, I don't think Simon has real <clears throat> issues, though. I think their issues. I mean, they. I mean, they made some. They're some, gaslighting us. <laughs> no, I just. I think people have genuine concerns about the prices of uh, shipping. That's been the biggest problem with Simon. Yeah. Um, and I think those are not unreasonable concerns, but they're also not unreasonable prices for the significant amount of stuff that they're shipping to you. Um, I do think it's an interesting choice to to buy the IP for a company that was not doing well. Uh, and it really just is a, to me, the big question is, is how much did they lose or how much not, I'm sorry, how much did Simon pay for the IP yeah. and all the work that had been done? And this is one of those ones where this is where, again, like the hate and the ire belongs with Mythic. Yeah. Because now Mythic just got a payout. But it's I don't just know inevitable how that you, that hate is going to just get passed on to Simon. No, I, I and and again, I've I've seen it in the discussions and stuff. Um, I haven't engaged with it because it's just not worth it. It's like screaming into the void. But you know, it's going to continue to happen. People are going to be like, I mean, I've seen it. Like, oh, I was a six hundred fifty dollar all in backer for Monster Pock or for, for Anesty or whatever, and you're only going to give me a base game. Like, you owe me. And I'm like, no, Simon doesn't owe you anything. It's also a Kickstarter, yeah. They don't owe you anything. Yeah, they they. Their whole thing, right? The whole this is not a pre order thing. You're not a store. You are in good faith throwing Bingo. this money at something. Yep. So for all that, um, Monster Apocalypse is still uh, an unknown whether or not that'll happen, but I'm probably out four or five hundred dollars if I go take advantage of the CMON stuff, and I probably will. Hmm. Um, but all things considered, I've backed hundreds of campaigns. Not hundreds, but well over a hundred campaigns. This is the first time I've been burned. So it's a big burn, though. It's a big burn. It hurts a lot because you got, I mean, backed five campaigns from this company, four of them oh unfulfilled. Um, one of them is on their way. So thank God, right? <laughs> um, but I have been so randomly, I think I've backed probably 25, be between 25 and 30 projects in my like kickstarter backing career right and i have fingers crossed i can't because my fingers are broken i don't know if you guys knew that um fingers crossed i don't get burned in like the next four or five that i'm still waiting on but so far it's looking okay there is one there's two that i'm scared of which ones darkest doom um because they put their kickstarter up they were upfront about it though that the game was not completely done mm -hmm. and that they were going to be developing expansions and all that stuff if stretch goals were hit. Yeah. Stretch goals were hit. So that they're like, okay, cool, we're gonna start working. Like start working on these expansions. Have you seen Darkest Doom? Mm -mm. It, I probably uh, have. It I'm looks really cool. Seen. It's like I think it's like um not sem not co op or like semi co op, but you are kind of all working towards the same objective, I think, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember anymore. But biggest draw for me was the minis. They have really cool minis. There's this, like, cage that you put on top of other minis. It's like a you get locked down kind of thing. Hmm. Kinky. There's a big, you know, the <laughs> Pride Rock from Lion King? Yeah. There's a big resin thing that looks like that. And there's a spot for a thing to hide under it. And then you can also go on top of it. I think I remember this one because their their price per mini was actually like really low, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been like probably been like a year and a half now, two years. That's pretty normal. I mean, two years is like starting point. Like, but they're not even like, oh, we're done and making production. everything now. Yeah. yeah, I remember passing on that one because I has like I have enough big box I has. miniature games. I has I has enough. I has big all box of them. The game. Yeah, and and the theme <laughs> didn't do anything for me, and the miniatures weren't like, oh god, I've I've got to have these. Yeah, see, I like the theme. Yeah, and I like the minis. And I was like, you know what? And also at the time, I was still like very into minis. Yeah. Um, I think I just said massive darkness is good enough. I don't need this. Yeah, it's probably it's like similar vibes. Yeah. Um, the other one is through the ice and snow. Have you you've seen that one? Mm -hmm. Have you seen that one? No. Oh, I think I should probably have yeah. it. It looks it looks pretty sick. It looks really cool. It's basically you are explorers essentially traveling through the Arctic, collecting 
like research and trying to set up like new camp and stuff, new camps and stuff like that. Again, it's been a while. It's been like a year and a half, two years. And they also were like, oh, we hit a stretch goal to design this and this and this and this. So now we're adding promos and all this other stuff. And they have not, um, at least I don't remember any recent updates that are like, oh, we're almost done. It's like, oh, we got some molds back waiting for to get them so we can approve them, blah, blah, blah. Um, which is a step forward. It's just been slow. Mm. I think it is a small company, though. Yeah. Two Tomatoes. I don't know if you heard that one. I think they have some other games, but I can't remember. Are you waiting on anything? Marvel? Yeah, um, Yes. I actually think I know people have, have had been having a problem with it um the second edition of uh kids on bikes uh it's a rpg <laughs> okay i was like <laughs> yeah, it's I an remember. rpg like what does rpg stand for i'm kidding it is a uh, tabletop role playing game in the same vein as something like uh dungeons and dragons um <laughs> well, except you're a child on a bike <laughs> and you and your other friends who are 9 year olds are going to the gas station to pick up lollipops <laughs> Can you a crack uh, in the street? Add a um, baseball card to your spokes. Ooh! Every no, time you talk, you have to go. I've never played. First. I've never played kids on bikes, but I like the theme about it. You it's ever like put a baseball card on the spokes of your bicycle. I've never done it, but I know like the motorcycle thing. Okay, cool. The motorcycle <laughs> thing. I don't know. Yeah, if it makes that was it sound like a, a it makes it sound like a motorcycle. Oh oh oh. oh. <laughs> but yeah, they they they. Put out the PDF version of it, but like no word on the actual oh, hardcover. So you yeah. literally have everything you need to play the game. Yeah, but I I <laughs> I paid for the the no the I get hardcover it. stuff. I get it. I get it. It'd be like if somebody you know said, "Hey, here's your print and play," and you're like, "Fuck, I paid for cardboard, man. Where's my shit?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get it. I do. I really do. Here's your print yeah, play like, file. Like yeah. But we at the end have of the day, what, you have full functionality of the game. We have what we need. Yes. A game with minis. Here's your STX 3D printer file, whatever they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Print your own damn game. <laughs> uh, Man. You guys leave a comment. I, I want to see, you know, what you guys are dealing with in Kickstarter. Because I know, I know every board gamer has at least one Kickstarter. And if you have it, if you don't have one right now you're waiting on, you will. Trust me, you probably just haven't seen Kickstarter. Also, not like a huge Kickstarter person either. Yeah, but you have one thing that you're waiting on. I have one thing. There you go. You got multiple things. Well, yeah. Oh, but, but like one thing that's like past overdue. Yeah. Like long overdue. Ah, okay, I got you. Yeah. For context, hell, I closed my pledge manager in 2019. Dude. <laughs> yeah. You know I have a crazy? spreadsheet. I'm glad I didn't see that. I would. That's. Back then, just for the theme, and I'm sure minis, the art style, I would have been all over it. The fun thing about that one is, uh, I, so I, I got that one at the base. I got like the, the base pledge or whatever. It was like 130 bucks or something like that. I paid for a neoprene mat, um, and then I got a Nefetafel set on top of that, which is Viking chess. So that's the reason why I ended, that one ended up costing me $240. Just shitty because I'm not gonna get obviously the Nefetopel stuff oh set either, God, which is literally dude. just dude fucking produce. Nefotopel. It's just it's a it you don't just make it make the game. Hey, I've got Nefetopel. You want to play? Yeah, <laughs> you have Nefetop. I do. That laughy taffy. That's what that reminds me of. You have Nefetopel. <laughs> there you go, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, crazy stuff, man. Kickstarter. Yeah. I mean, we could go on for hours about Kickstarter alone. I literally could. Yeah. Did I you back fromage? From store. Which one? Fromage. It's fromage. Yeah. Making cheese. Yeah, yeah I did. About that one. There was definitely a period there from like October. October. I know you hit the. Hakton. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Your German is coming out. Yeah. Uh, from like October to like early December, where like there was just so many games where I'm like, I I honestly think I was inspired by spending more time with you guys, oh. where I was like. Oh, flock together. I'm like, I don't know. This seems all right. But I'm like, but it's got birds. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I know who's going to like this game. Yeah. 
tons of that stuff. That that uh, gosh, so many. Uh, there's a, one of the critter game. There's another critter game. Critter, critter kitchen. Kitchens. Yeah, oh, that one. You got that one right. Mm-hmm. There's another animal like defense game. Dude, there's a bunch of animal themed stuff where I'm like, oh, these goats are gonna love it. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Which I think honestly, like you said, the group dynamic is a big motivator, right? For sure. for gaming, you know. Yeah. If you're like, oh, I'm not really itching to play any specific game, but the fellows are gonna get together. The yeah. fel- the fillets. Mm-hmm. That's usually the, the first thing at. I look at. Like the first thing I'll look at is like player count. Mm-hmm. Like it's like one to five is the good spot for me because of six. because of our thing, mm-hmm. and then the like the us four it also works. So like one through four, I'm like, why not just one more? Yeah, just one, just one more. I it's hard. One more. It's hard it four. is hard. It is hard because one. We have our thing, which is mm-hmm. five. We have us, which is the four, so that's fine. But then, like, you go to Black Potion or you go to any game store, you don't know who's going to be there unless you invite people. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I know we, I think we see the world differently. And I know, like, Enrique sees the world differently uh, than I do. Yeah. Kev is not playing with strangers. <laughs> I don't want to play with strangers, and I want to play what I want to play. And I want to play with the people that I came to play with. And I don't want to play throwaway. They're not throwaway games, but they feel like throwaway games when it's like, oh, hey, there there are seven of us now. Like, now we have to find a game that seven people can play. And I'm like, I, I just don't want to. Let's that. bust out. I'd rather just split. Where words. I'd rather just split. Three of us play game, four of us play game. Which defeats the purpose of coming together with your friends. Yeah, especially out in it, public. Yeah, because it really does start to, to segregate people out and you're not really interacting with the other group that much. So oh, imagine being like you and like, I don't know, four other friends, mm. four other friends show up and then three strangers are like, Hey, let's, how about we all try and play together? And you're like, I don't want to do that. Oh, well let's split up into groups. And then you get kicked out of the friend group to play with the strangers. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably, this is going to sound petty. <laughs> I'd, I'd probably done, just go home. Just sit at the bar. No, I'd probably just, just go home. I've done I'd the probably be like, yeah. I've done the split up. Not fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's it just, just it makes me feel at like the other table, like No, literally. Like I was I was playing the game and I was like constantly looking back. I like oh Was that, God, that was that one of the ones home. that I was there for? Because I remember there have been a couple times where on Sundays That was one of them. Yeah. Was when we split to play Encyclopedia. That that was that. Well, day. that was one of them. Oh, that was where Aaron got left out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I felt like really bad. Yeah, yeah, no, because we had already talked about it. Yeah, and that was the thing. And then, that well, other then there guy. was that other guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. Just you know, hey, Sebastian, how do you? Can you explain this role to me? Just a fellow gamer, <laughs> you know. But it only plays four, and so we had our fourth gamer. Yeah, um, and it was predetermined. So, you know, I only had room for these two fellas. Yeah. But it worked out. Yeah. Um, dang. I, I, you guys got me off. Well, it's kick, we're just crowdfunding. Oh, yeah, crowdfunding. All right. I mean, like, on that note, like, things that I do enjoy. The same thing and the opposite, right? Like, I've now discovered I don't like solo games. Just not interested. I'd rather do pretty much anything else. Um, but, like, big campaign games... Like, I still want to like them, but again, like, looking at the dynamics and the social group and whatnot, being like, I don't know when I'm going to convince anybody to table this game 20 times. Yeah. (laughs) So, I don't know. It's tough. Yeah. So, do you uh, think, both of y'all, you see a game come up and you're like, that is my jam. Like everything is speaking to me. Love it all. Yeah. Art, gameplay, whatever. But it's like, I don't think anybody in my group is going to play this. If it fits me, I get it. You're yeah. still going to get it? Yeah. yeah. I like playing with you guys, but I will branch out and find other people to play yeah. with. Yeah. I, and, and, like and, if you guys had no interest at all in hegemony, I want to play that game so bad. Like I would 
I will find someone. I'm to gonna play, play that with you. Yeah, I do want to no play it. I yeah. skipped that one in the crowdfunding because it just didn't. I never saw it in crowdfunding, yeah. and then I saw I saw it like people were talking about it, and I was like, "Where can I get this?" And it was like, "Oh, this closed months ago." I was like, mm. and then I found it. I'm definitely getting the game too. I don't care. Um, and that's a that's a function of again. I don't necessarily like. Oh, I'm gonna go find other people, but like, yeah, there may be opportunities. Don't say it like that. I didn't say it like that. Yeah, you did. You're no, I'm just other people. I I'm okay with. Meeting other people. I'll find, yeah. find, I'll find somebody else. Granted, I don't think any of us have to worry about that. I feel like we're all. Everyone kind of, here is. Well, we will no, play. That's not entirely true. If I found a, a co op game. Oh. <laughs> yeah, see? If I found a trick taker. <laughs> I mean, trick takers don't take that long. Okay, right? yeah, I, that's fair. I don't like know? either of those. But like, I like the reality of like sinking in where I was like, oh man. Um, you know, the pandemic legacies. I have yeah. all three of them. I'd love to play them. And when, like we talked last week, one of them is rated the number two game on the planet. But I'm like, I don't, I don't know. You have to find the right group. Exactly. And um, the other big functional part that is, again, is like having the, having the financial means, which is a blessing, right? It's very, very lucky to be able to be like, spend money Whatever. on this game and never play it. <laughs> Like, I just sell my body on the internet for the means. <laughs> flirting or harassment? <laughs> no, what is it? Flirting or HR? <laughs> Who you calling? I'll yeah. play Pandemic Legacy. All right. Oh, there you guys go. Two player game of Pandemic Legacy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can and then we can burn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah wild I'm sure photo. you could find at least one more person who's like, oh my gosh, I really want to play that game. I never get a chance to play it nowhere else. I'm, I'm, the question is, is, is it four or five players? I guarantee I you four. if it's five, we could play Thursday it. we'll play. On Thursday. Yeah. We could easily do that. Yeah. 100%. It's not that complex, I, I don't think, either. four, though. I think it might be. That's the problem. Unfortunate. Well, I know Pandemic is four players. Mm-hmm. The question is, is in the Legacy game, do they expand it? Because they're like, I don't know. Big game. We'll play. Figure that out later. <laughs> Somebody Google it for us and let us know. Yes, and speaking of asking Google questions, mm. Kevin is going to be our Google today ooh, ooh, ooh. for oh. our board scale trivia segment. <laughs> <laughs> you get what theme song? What sound does a question mark make? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good. good. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> All right. All right. So, just like last time, two of us will have whiteboards for answering purposes. And Kevin today is our question master, and he has brought us master? a number of questions that I'd never asked, so we'll find <laughs> out when he stops asking questions. Um, and I'm going to put you guys down as gently as I can while he asks the first one. Go ahead, Kev. All right. Some of these uh, have some if you tie-ins to our, our conversations from last week, so we'll see if, if you did any additional attention. research. Yeah. Uh, first question, very appropriate too, based on our last conversation here. The highest grossing uh, crowdfunding board game campaign. What was the highest grossing crowdfunding campaign board game themed or category? Like, so just straight up on Kickstarter, not crowdfunding, not late fund, not late pledge or late pledge included? In d- During the active campaign. Okay. Yep. Crap. I think... You gotta write it down, dude. It's one of two, and I cannot remember the name of the other one. Oh. This is why we can't have nice things. Now it's covered in fur. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it is. Also, bonus points if you can tell me how much money it raised... One point four billion. <laughs> hey, hey, it got me the dub. <laughs> Watch you wipe it off. All right, let's see what you got. All right, Frost Haven. Frost Haven. Eighteen million. Fourteen million. Sorry. Frost Haven. Fifty six million. That's okay. Crazy. Fifty six million, dude. Congratulations, you are both correct. It is Frost Haven. However, the the uh, the net 
according to Wikipedia, was $12,969,608. I I overestimated you all. Overestimated. But that was a bonus point. Now you get the bonus point. So you guys both get one Oh, that's not a closer? No. The bonus point? No, I got a better better tiebreaker for the last one. Okay, that's fine. All right, we both get a point. Woo! You don't deserve it. Fifty-six million, <laughs> dude. You got. You should go negative one for that one. He's got. He's got the trauma from last one. <laughs> Billion. I know. Billion with the B. I'm surprised you didn't write fifty-six point something. Oh yeah. By the way, if you um, if you didn't see the short and see all this comments, I was. It's not four hundred and twenty-three. It's five hundred and forty-six point something. Almost four five hundred and forty-seven. Someone re- recount re- reaccounted for yeah, years. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Forget it. I'm and not a during math that, person. they called him Glenn Beck. <laughs> <laughs> they said they would just uh, stop caring at a million and enjoy it. Yeah, there's some some good. Go look the, go look up the short. It's it's entertaining. All right, uh, question numero dos. What is the oldest board game in history? And a bonus if you Ooh. can tell me what millennia it's from. I'll give you the millennia. What the heck is a millennia? A thousand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a millennial. I know that. Uh, Just kidding. I don't know if I am or not. Stop looking, Dwayne. Not. Stop looking at you, pee pee. What is a millennium? <laughs> What's a millennium? 1600? So that would be a century. A millennia would be like. Oh, shit. The first millennia, the second millennia. We are in the third millennia common of the common era. Okay. Wait, what millennia it's from? Yeah. If you put a year down, put a year down. Just put a year down. Like, I'll ballpark it. That's fine. <laughs> okay, I got it. All right. Can you show them? My answer is Mancala. 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 I don't know how to say it. And you think that's from the year 1457, 1457, the year of the samurais? Like, you don't think there was any board games ever before that? Mine. Okay. Okay, well, now I feel dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Is that's the one where you have the little glass balls, yeah, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Ur from the 1.5 millennium. <laughs> hey, that's that's kind of close to my year. The game of Ur <laughs> might be that one. Ur. I'm gonna ask you a question Is that a real game that you're aware of? Yes, yeah, oh, interesting. I, I've heard of it. Yeah, uh, according to my internet research. Uh, the oldest board game in history is called Senet. Egyptian. It's an Egyptian sticks. game. Yep. And uh, we have evidence of it. F- I don't know why I knew that. We have evidence from the 4th century BCE, around the year 3500 BCE. 4th century? Mm-hmm. You said millenniums. Uh, sorry, I did. Ma- <laughs> I did 4th fourth, fourth millennia <laughs> BCE. You are correct. Senet. 3500 Years BC Senate company made that mm. oink <laughs> <laughs> oink games. There were definitely <laughs> pigs back then. All right, so and dinosaurs. Okay, so this is gonna be our tiebreaker. Gosh, dude, these are tough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, leave a comment. Dude's a history teacher. <laughs> leave a com- like, oh, oh, that's this true. This is an exam. <laughs> leave, a, leave a comment if you're like, what the heck? If you didn't know these, you guys literally got the first one right. If you were you ever one for. One for two. I was if really you were ever the, a student too. in school and had a history teacher, uh, like the video. <laughs> <laughs> and subscribe. Dang, that's only going to be a few of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a list. You're going to name as many of, you, oh, of these oh, as you can, right? So this will hopefully be our tiebreaker. If not, if you guys tie oh, it, no. then we'll have to go back to the Frost Haven numbers. So Games Dwayne, start with the letter A. Don't mess this up. Nope. Will not. Related to conversation from last week. No. The trivia question. Actually. Why do I feel like he's... Oh, why do I feel like Name <laughs> as many of the bottom five rated games on BGG as possible. These are games that have received an actual rating out of X thousands. No way. There's bottom no five. way. The bottom five. Name as many of the bottom five as you can. So you get five guesses, and I will tell you if they're right or wrong. What the? Like, 
not one through five, but like the like literally five. the last Jesus five rated Christ. games on B G G. And I will give you guys here's a little here's a little here's a little tip. No, no hints, no hints. No hints? No All hints. All right. Okay. Cause you're like, I fucking got this. Uh oh my god. Give up. No. Give up. I'm I'm confident to the dark that I'm not getting any of these. But I'm writing five things down. Just in case. If I hit one, I know you're not hitting shit. All right, here's what we'll do for the tiebreaker. We'll go from we'll go up six, seven, and uh, eight. You're not hitting any of these, dude. I'm sorry. Relax, bro. <laughs> bro, bro. I right, show these show these to the to my fans, to your adoring fans. Mm-hmm. All forty five of you beautiful people. I've got one more. Come on, what you got? Uh, He's not got nothing. That is just full of scribbles. He just scribbled all over that. Uh, uh, fuck. Is Viticulture one of them? It might be. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. I only got four. Oh, you're calling it. All right, I've got That's five. That's embarrassing. All right. So, what do, what do we got? What do we got? So, Uno. Uno, Candyland, Trouble, Sorry, and Shoots and Ladders. What the hell is Hi-Ho Cherio? <laughs> Versus Monopoly, oh, Monopoly, Hi-Ho Cherio, Candyland, and Uno. All right. So here, starting with number five. Doingus. War. The card game? Mm-hmm. It counts. God. I was thinking if card... I literally didn't think mm. a card game would be on there. As you literally have Uno on there. No, like, like hearts. Like 52 deck. Mm. Card games. Bingo. Are you kidding me? You can't, dude. There's no 70 and 80 year olds playing bingo <laughs> and then going to BGG to grade it. BGG hasn't been around long enough for them to have seen it. It's Kevin's one of them. On, your, their, on their year one Mac, your, Mac box. Here's your, you, you, you both got this one Candyland. Cool. Dang. The third worst game. Really? Yep. That's that's the second worst. That's mean. That's a kid's game, dude. <laughs> is going to give Sebastian the win. Let's and that's go. Shoots and ladders. That's Let's bullshit. go. <laughs> Does anyone want to take a guess based on something, what we just heard what the worst ranked game is coming in at number 25,763. That's going to be some obscure shit. It's, nope. No. Like, we've heard of this. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's slapjack. <laughs> 21? Tick. Tack. Oh. Toe. <laughs> Tic Tac Toe. Tic Tac Toe. That is not a board or card game. Tic Tac Toe is worse than Candyland. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Their strategy to Tic Tac Toe. Yeah. It's be first. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen like the variations of uh, Tic Tac Toe out there where like my nephews, ha- he got one where they're like you put down like little like curves. So put the a finger curves down. can either make the zero or the X if you put it the other way. And like. You can either put something down or flip the other player's stuff or p- flip a thing. Mm. That's no. dumb, too. That better be like the 10th last one. It's not bad. I'm surprised Monopoly wasn't up there. because You know what I should have wrote? I fucking hate Monopoly. He's number six. Oh. I should have okay. wrote, <laughs> wrote Connect Four. I mean, when you, you would have been you wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, just as a on there, you know, because oh. that's definitely down there. Yeah. The uh, Monopoly is number six. Uh, number seven is Trouble. And number eight is the game of life. Oh, I almost wrote life. I didn't think people hated it that much. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 25,000. Wasn't expecting war and and bingo. Bingo. Bingo after he said it. Okay, sure. But also. Yeah. Why are you rating bingo? (laughs) Why aren't you? Did your grandma not love you enough because she was always gone at bingo? And you you just. You just got. You got to. You have to just. I feel like bingo and. Candyland are in the same damn. No, it's luck, dude. No, it's all well, luck. No. Yeah, but you know what? There aren't Candyland halls. Hey, is there bingo enough. halls? What the fuck? What side of YouTube are you on? 
bingo, bingo halls. halls. Like there are literally places in oh, 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 every oh, oh. major city where you can go Do to you know play what I'm bingo. No. Hall H A U L. This is what I want in my bingo tonight. I mean, dude, you could win money in bingo. Oh. Dude, they bet. I got they a buy $15 them cards. gift card to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> I got the bingo. <laughs> you oh get free bingo nights with your AARP membership. Ah, exactly. There you go. Your AARP <laughs> membership. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you have to show them your social security ID for you to walk in the hall, into the bingo hall. <laughs> dude, we should do that some... Oh. Bingo? Podcast dude, we, at a bingo hall? I was just about to say, I was like, we've been talking about doing this BP. Let's do it at a bingo hall. Oh, my gosh. Set it up next to three people who stink, who are just... <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, sorry, God. Sonny, I can't see. Would you mind stamping? <laughs> Would you mind stamping all eight of these cards on this side of me? And they've got like sixteen little stampers. It's like, where chunk, did you chunk, get these? Chunk. Oh my gosh, dude! And they're Jeez. like really cool looking too. <laughs> Are they, they like they the, go big uh, off and their teeth fall out, fly out of their mouth? It's like uh, with like D and D players who have like specialized like metal dice and yeah. whatever. Like they've got specialized. <gasps> those D and D players are going to be those bingo players oh. that have <laughs> their custom stamper <laughs> that they got from Wormwood, and they get <laughs> vegan organic ink from there you go. somewhere. Get those on Kickstarter. Exactly, dude. Ooh. Hey, pen pending. Set yeah. of bingo bingo stamps. Yeah. So here's the real question though. So like that's like the bingo halls, and that's a generation of people who like didn't grow up with with board games. Like we have been growing up with them. Will bingo halls transition into like RPG and board gaming spaces for our generations when we get old? No way, dude. The cognitive decline is is crazy. I don't know though because I mean, yes, it's obviously a part of aging. It'll but be some long turns. <laughs> Whose turn is it? No. I don't know. <laughs> no, but like, there are studies that show that like playing games and stuff like that help keep your brain young. Dude, can Grandpa done, Joey done by carry wingspan into the building? I'm just <laughs> not the big box. <laughs> yeah, it's all gonna have to. Well, by then, everything will be digital. Dude, you put on your headset and it'll be like every all the old people are just gonna be with their headset on. <laughs> Moving augmented reality pieces with their brains. They're not even moving anything. Oh, you They're know what's gonna be cool like, though? It's just gonna be lying like this. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Their freaking heart rate monitor. Me, me, me. If you die in the game, you die in real life. The lady has to run over. <laughs> excuse me, Mister Jose. Mister Jose, it's your turn. Hey, excuse me. If oh. you're old, like this video. <laughs> Define old. Um, if you are 36, <laughs> like. This. Bitch. <laughs> Grab the mouse that's next to your computer. Don't worry, it's not a real one. And you'll see a little thumb guy like this under <laughs> under the video. There's an up one and a down one. You want to click. Uh, just go one. get your grandson. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> yes. And while and while you're at it, um, go ahead and send that Nigerian prince five hundred dollars. <laughs> Dude, he's been trying to send you his fortune for years, and you've been ignoring yes, him. You need to trust him. Um, <laughs> I actually just got all of my money that he sent me in a duffel bag. It's downstairs, though. I you know, so I can't really. You're welcome. I can't get it and show it. To it was you. me. <laughs> you always be my African prince. Tanzania. That was my nickname that. in high school. <laughs> Hansabania. African prince. Oh. Pennsylvania. Skibidi <laughs> Shinua. <laughs> he hit, he hit the skibbity. He hit yeah. it and he got it. The whole All right, and with with our grandpa hitting the skibbity, <laughs> we're gonna end <laughs> this episode of the Board Scale Podcast. Um, I hope you liked it. If you did, and you want to see more, you want to see other of our videos, or you just want to make fun of us sometimes, that's totally cool. Leave a comment, like the video, subscribe. Um, you have some? No. Oh, okay. Just being weird. Oh, okay. I, you're, is your spine okay? You just kind of <laughs> scoliosis. If, Thanks for watching. Oh, if you oh. play, if you play War, Candyland, Tic Tac Toe, Tic Tac Toe, Bingo, Bingo, or um, Shoots and Ladders, unsubscribe. <laughs>
Um, play something else. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, if my eight-year-old nephew can play Wingspan, you don't have an excuse. His eight-year-old is just a small Kevin. Gray hair, it, everything. It's, it's just Kevin scaled down. <laughs> Same voice, too. He's like, yeah, mate. <laughs> My uncle's got me investing in a 401k. Did you just dox me? <laughs> yeah, I've actually uh, backed several Kickstarters. I'm still waiting on them. <laughs> hey, don't forget. Invest in your IRA. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>